3D printing in the feral garden. What's that all about? Stay with me and I'll let you know. So let's examine what a 3D printer is. The 3D printing process is putting down layers of molten plastic and building up to make a 3D object. This particular printer is a commercial one that you can buy, actually it was in a local supermarket chain. And while it's still expensive, it is at the lower end of the market. So let's go through how it actually makes the objects. We'll start up, up the top, we have a spool of filament. You can get all different types of filament depending on your needs. They all have different properties, they all have different settings. You can get filament which will last outside, you can have filament that will stand heat, and you can have filament that is actually biodegradable. That filament is fed down into an extruder. The extruder actually takes that filament and heats it up and then puts it down in layers. It builds up those layers nice and slowly. It actually takes, on the setting we're using at the moment, it takes five passes for that to actually put up one millimetre. You can see the machine works its way through and you just have to sit and wait. It's not a quick process, it doesn't happen instantly, it takes its time. In the case of this particular nozzle we're printing, it actually takes a couple of hours to put together. So you set the machine and then barring any mistakes, when it's finished, it'll stop and you'll have your particular 3D printed object. This one we're printing is a 3D nozzle which will go on the end of a bottle for watering in the garden. So let's go and have a look at a completed one. We've had a look at the 3D printer in action. Let's look at some of the objects that we can print and use in the garden. The first one we saw was a nozzle and here is a completed one. It was that way down on the bed and it built up the layers round and round until it got right up the top. It even printed the screw thread at the end and that screw thread can be put onto a soft drink bottle. Here is an example and this one can be used for watering your plants. You can keep the water in the bottle and water the plants whenever you need to. It works quite well. Here are some other things that you can print. A whole range of different pot plants. These are different pot plant holders. Here's a minion one. You can print those up. And I admit, yeah, they're a bit of a novelty but they're an interesting, fun thing you can do with your 3D printer. On a more practical note, the net cups that I've been using in the hydroponic system have been 3D printed. This is made out of a special type of plastic which won't degrade outside. It's actually made out of the same plastic that soft drink bottles are made from. And that, I'll show you how that works in the hydroponic section in a moment. I've also recently printed out a bird feeder I haven't got this one set up, I'll show that to you in a later clip. But again, a bottle goes on top of it, bird seed inside, hang that from a tree, and the smaller birds then have a place where they can feed. I have some other examples in the garden, so let's go and have a look at some of those as well. One thing you may have seen in other clips is this little weather vane up the top. This particular wind spinner, as they call it, has little cups that have been printed out. The main section actually has a ball bearing which makes it easy for it to spin around. And when the wind comes up, seeing how fast it spins, tells you how strong the wind is. And it also has a weather vane up the top which shows you the direction of the wind. Now there are even fancier versions that you can hook up to a computer, measure the actual speed. But this one's just a wind spinner, we call it. We get a nice little breeze like that, and there it goes, spinning its way around. Now in the aquaponics, one of the problems I've had is particularly when I plant some new seedlings, the aquaponics seem to like to attract plenty of slugs. So what I've been able to do is print some 3D slug traps. These slug traps, I'm in two parts, got a little hat that goes on top, 
You're supposed to put beer in the middle, but I got sick and tired of wasting my beer, so I make my own solution up. It's basically a mixture of yeast, sugar, and I'll put a little bit of molasses in it. It even attracts some flies in there as well. But in case you're wondering if it actually does attract slugs, we'll have a look at the one up the back. This one up the back, if we zoom right in on it, you can see there is a little slug making its way up through the trap. And what I do is if I see them, I pick them off, drop them into the aquaponics, a little bit of extra fish food, and hopefully it'll save my plants. Here are some newly planted lettuce, and this is when the slugs really like to come in and attack, when the lettuce is nice and young like this. As it gets older, it gets more resistant to the slugs. Over in the hydroponics again, this is where you can see those net cups I was talking about. The net cups look like this. When they're 3D printed, you can use any color material, it really doesn't matter. But to see them in action, here they are with the bok choy. This is our crack key system, so they don't need to circulate. See the hydroponic balls that are in there, the clay media, that just holds the plant. And then the root development underneath. So those pots, if I break one or I need extra ones, the advantage of 3D printing is I can make as many of them as I want, and in whatever colour I want as well. Other things I've been 3D printing for the garden. Include little covers. This is a little cover that was designed to snap on to a two inch hole. The only problem was I didn't actually have a two inch hole. I had a one inch hole in the containers I was using. So what I decided to do, I halved it. And I use those in my hydroponics as well. So to show you an example of that, we come over here to our crack key tomatoes to fill up the buckets because they need to fill up every now and then. I used to have a little rubber grommet and more often than not, when I tried to get it off, I'd push it inside the container. Now, it's just a matter of taking that little snap off. The beauty of it is it goes back on and you can actually hear it snap in nice and firm. Now, when I have more buckets, if I need more of these, I just print more of them. Or if one of them breaks, this sometimes these little handles break, it's quite easy to print another one. It's called just-in-time manufacturing. Some other things I've printed for the garden include plant labels, a whole range of different plant labels. These ones are designed for the herb garden. The advantage of these are when I send my daughter out and ask her to go and get some coriander, <laughs> she doesn't come back with a whole lot of parsley for me instead. Well, hopefully she doesn't. I also have a new project on the way and I'll take you through this project bit by bit. This is going to be a little weather station. I've actually printed one of these before, but I've got a new version of it and I've just printed the case. So inside that will go the electronics, up the top will go a solar panel, and that will send information from the weather in the garden into the house and hopefully out to the internet. I'll take you through that project step by step a little bit later in a different video. One thing I've tried but I haven't been able to be very successful with is printing a Venturi. This is one design that I had a go at. Unfortunately, while it does produce some bubbles, it doesn't produce enough. Some of the other Venturi designs that are sort of built up out of PVC pipe work a little bit better. So I'm on the lookout for a good Venturi that I can print with a 3D printer. So lots and lots of designs are available. They're all on Thingiverse. I'll show you that a little bit later on. I'll put that in the link as well if you want to have a look and options of things that you might want to print for your garden as well. One thing you should never do is leave your 3D printed objects around. Especially when you have a chewing monster like Tuppence. She has picked up that blue neck cup we were looking at earlier and she's decided it's hers now. So I think I am going to need to print a brand new one. So is 3D printing for everybody? Not at all. I'm lucky, I actually have a son who's an engineer 
and he can help me when there are problems with the printer. You have to know how to load the filament, you have to know the settings, you have to be able to fix the problems as they occur with the printer. But if you are interested in it, it's an interesting hobby. Lots of things you can print, not just for the garden, you can print them for the house, you can prototype things, and it's really good if you're into model making. So I've had a look at some of the models that I've printed for the Feral Garden. You could have a go at printing some yourself. If there's something you really want that you see in the, in the website, you can actually send that model to 3D printing agencies and they print it off for you without you having to worry about buying a 3D printer. So if you're interested in it, plenty of things to look at, plenty of websites to visit. I'll put them all in the links and if you have any questions, drop us a comment. I'll see you again on the Feral Garden.